Right, now the other day we had got as far as um, talking about the product rule quotient tool and chain rule. Okay, and just to refresh your memories, I'll do an example. If f of x is equal to 2x e to the power of minus x squared, find f dash x. Remember, if the function is called f of x and you differentiate it, you get dy dx. And if it's oh, sorry, f dash x. And if it's called y, you get dy dx when you differentiate it. Now, what rule or rules are we using here? It's a mixture of two, isn't it? It's the chain rule and the product rule. Okay, the product rule because we have two x multiplied by e to the power of minus x squared. And the chain rule, because we have e to the power of minus x squared, it's not e to the power of x. Okay? So we let u equal 2x, and we let v equal e to the power of minus x squared. Now, du dx is easy. du dx is just 2. Okay? Now, for the chain rule, how do we use it? What do we do? You write a list of your functions, reading them backwards. The first function is minus x squared, and the second function is e. Is that okay? Now all you've got to do is differentiate each of your two functions one at a time, and that gives you your answer. So dv dx is equal to, remember you differentiate each function one at a time and multiply your two answers together. So if I differentiate minus x squared, I get minus 2x. Okay, and if I differentiate e, I get e. Okay, so that's e to the power of <coughs> minus x squared. Okay, because if you differentiate e, you get e. So the minus 2x came from differentiating that function, and e to the power of minus x squared came from differentiating that function. Okay, now it's the product rule. What's the product rule? f dash x equals u dv dx plus v du dx. So it's basically the two things in yellow multiplied together plus the two things in blue multiplied together. Okay? u dv dx plus v du dx. So f dash x equals u dv dx, that's 2x multiplied by minus 2x multiplied by e to the power of minus x squared. Okay? And then plus v du dx, so that's plus 2e to the power of minus x squared. Okay? And tidying up, that's going to be 2e to the power of minus x squared minus 4x squared e to the power of minus x squared. I'm just putting the positive one first. Okay? So I put the 2e to the minus x squared first because it's plus. Now, what do you notice looking at that? Well, you've got a 2 common and you've got an e to the power of minus x squared common. So that's 2e to the power of minus x squared multiplied by 1 minus 2x squared. Is that okay? Everybody all right with that? Now let's just add a little tiny little bit to the question. Okay, part one we'll say was just find f dash x, which is now done. Okay? Then part two, for what values of x is f dash x equal zero? Okay, for what value, or for what values of x is f dash x equal zero? Find x if f dash x is zero. <clears throat> so what do you think? If that's true, 2e to the power of minus x squared multiplied by 1 minus 2x squared is equal to zero. Yes? Now, if you multiply two things together and the answer is zero, what can you say? One, one of them has to be equal to zero, okay? 
So either e to the power of minus x squared is equal to zero from this part here, which is impossible, okay? Because e to the power of anything is a positive number. Now you could argue that if you make x bigger and bigger and bigger, e to the power of minus x becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and gets nearer and nearer to zero. But does it ever actually reach zero? No, it doesn't. Is that okay? It never actually reaches it. So the only possible way that f dash x could really be equal to zero is if the second bit, 1 minus 2x squared, was equal to zero. Which would mean that 2x squared is equal to 1, which would mean that x squared is equal to a half. And if x squared is equal to a half, what's x? You sure? Plus or minus, not 1 over 4. 1 over the square root of 2, you're squaring, you should be square rooting. Okay, so 1 over, plus or minus 1 over root 2. Is that okay? Now I know it's jumping ahead a little bit, but why would it be important to worry about where f dash x equals 0? It's a possible turning point for a curve. Okay, so that means that those two points, x equals plus or minus 1 over root 2, they are likely to be either local maxima or local minima of that function either a local max or a local min. Now we'll kind of get on to that over the rest of this week. Okay, today is just about how to differentiate. Okay, but are we happy with what we see? Okay, so typically part one is find f dash x, maybe find the second derivative as well. And then part two is what's the value of x for which this is equal to zero? And then part three is probably maximizing, minimizing. Okay, depending on the way they phrase the question, obviously. So are we okay with that? Most importantly, have we got the hang of the chain rule? As I think everybody understands the product rule and quotient rule, it's the chain rule is the tricky one. We're okay with it? Okay. Right then, next up. Next up, what I want to talk about is parametric differentiation, which to be honest is an absolute piece of cake. Okay, it's simple. So parametric differentiation. Now, in most, the parameter could be anything, but in most situations, the parameter is t. Okay, R really, I suppose, in the Leibniz course, they could use t for time, or they could use theta for angle. Okay, either or. Okay, so parametric differentiation, a very important part of differentiation. Now, Imagine this, just, uh, I like to justify it first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an x and y axis, like so. Okay? Now, any of you who do applied maths, you'll have a kind of a deeper, under or physics, you'll have a deeper understanding of this than people who don't do applied maths. But anyway, it's just to give you a physical example. We've talked about this before, or this kind of thing, when we were doing quadratic curves. Imagine there's a football placed at the origin. Okay, and I kick that football. Okay, what's that football going to do? What kind of a track is it going to move on? It's going to move along a quadratic curve. Exactly. Okay. Now, imagine I just take a photograph of it when it's there. Okay. Would you agree its coordinates would be x comma y, as always? All right. Now let's just say for argument's sake, do you know the way distance equals velocity by time? Okay, when you're moving at a constant speed. In the x direction, you have to separate it into two directions, x and y. So in the x direction, we'll say that the speed of the, or sorry, the position of the football at any time is 15 multiplied by t. Okay, so that's just velocity by time. You don't need to know the whole velocity by time bit for this question, I'm just telling you where it's coming from. Now. Again, anybody who does applied maths or physics will realize that there's a very important formula that says s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So you wouldn't be too confused if I wrote down 20t. 20 is the velocity in the y direction. And we know that gravity is about 10 meters per second squared, isn't it? So if I wrote down minus 5t squared, the world wouldn't end. Okay. That's, if you don't do physics and applied maths, don't worry about what I just said. I'm just trying to tell you that there's a justifiable reason as to why I'm coming up with these formulas. Is that okay? So x is equal to 15t, y is equal to 20t minus 5t squared. 
don't worry, you're never going to have to come up with the formula, you'll just be given them. I just think it's nice to know, to think your way through it, if you do physics or applied maths, it's nice to see an application. Okay? Now, unfortunately, I'm going to be asked to find dy dx. But can you see, I have a problem. There is no equation where y and x appear in the same formula. Like I have x in terms of t and I have y in terms of t. There's no formula with x's and y's mixed. You understand me? The handiest thing to do would be to look at it and say, well, I'm told what x is. I can find out what dx dt is because I'm told what x is in terms of t. Now, what do you get if you differentiate 15t? You just get 15. Now, how easy is that? Okay. What about dy dt? 20 minus 10t. Is that okay? 20 minus 10t. Now, look here for a second. In dy dx, I'm going to ask you something very obvious. Which letter is on top? Is it y or x? Y. So which one do you think I should put on top? dy dt. Which letter is on the bottom? dx. So what do you think I should put on the bottom? dx dt. Okay? So here's our formula. <laughs> dy dx equals dy dt divided by dx dt. It's just dy dt divided by dx dt. So very simply, it's 20 minus 10t divided by 15. Isn't that simple? Now, can you think of anything that divides into 20, 10, and 15? 5 does. So that's 4 minus 2t divided by 3. Is that okay? Or you could, if you like, I'd leave it the way it is there, but you could go 4 over 3 minus 2 over 3 t. Okay, 4 over 3 minus 2 over 3 t. Is that totally clear? Okay. Now, as I said, I'm just trying to give you an application to show you how these things would work. Okay? You probably, again, anybody doing physics or applied maths will realize that you always find out things in terms of t. Okay? And it would be just too much hassle to turn it back to y's and x's. So the handiest thing is differentiate x, differentiate y, and then just divide your two answers. Okay? So, next example. This is more kind of towards a leave insert question. If x is equal to the log of 1 plus t squared and y is equal to the log of 1 minus t squared, find dy dx. So if x is equal to the log of 1 plus t squared and y is the log of 1 minus t squared, we've been asked to find dy dx. Okay? So x equals the log of 1 plus t squared. And y is the log of 1 minus t squared. Now, what rule do I have to use for both of these? It's a chain rule for both, isn't it? Okay. So first of all, the one on the left-hand side. What's my first function? It's 1 plus t squared. Remember, you read it backwards, okay? Read in reverse. So that's 1 plus t squared, and the second function is ln, okay? So first function, 1 plus t squared, and second function is ln. So that means then that dx dt, well, you call it out to me. Don't make me do it. 2t multiplied by 1 over 1 plus t squared. Absolutely perfect, Katie. Where did the 2t come from? Yeah, differentiate 1 plus t squared. Where did the 1 over 1 plus t squared come from? If you, if you differentiate log x, you get 1 over x. So here you get 1 over whatever came after log. So my answer, as you said, you multiplied it out in your head, 2t over 1 plus t squared. Okay, now what about dy dt? Well, my two functions in this case are 1 minus t squared, that's my first function, 
and my second function is ln. Okay? So differentiate them for me. Minus 2t multiplied by 1 over 1 minus t squared. The minus 2t comes from differentiating 1 minus t squared. And then ln, 1 over whatever came after log. So that's 1 over 1 minus t squared. So the answer to dy dt is minus 2t over 1 minus t squared. Okay? Everybody happy? Isn't that the same as? No, they're not the same. There's a, minus, there's a plus here and a minus over there. No, but if you if you took away the minus sign on top, Michelle, you're misreading it. If you took away the minus sign on top, it'll be two t over t squared minus one. Okay, and there's no point in doing that. Okay, you're just confusing your arithmetic. Is that all right? You can see why it's wrong, can you? Right. Dy dx. What's our formula again? Simple formula. Who goes on top? Y. Who goes on the bottom? X. So it's dy dt divided by dx dt, okay, which is 2t over 1 plus t squared divided by minus 2t over 1 minus t squared. Is that okay? Oh, sorry. I looked at them the wrong way around, my mistake, sorry. So minus 2t over 1 minus t squared divided by 2t over 1 plus t squared. Is that okay? Now when you're dividing by a fraction, what do you do? You flip it upside down and multiply. So that's going to be 1 plus t squared divided by 2t. Now, if you look at it carefully, I've got 2t on top, 2t on the bottom, they cancel out. Now, I've got a minus sign on top, so it's minus into 1 plus t squared over 1 minus t squared. And the tidiest way to write that is as 1 plus t squared divided by t squared minus 1. Shift the minus sign down to the bottom, it's probably the neatest way to put it. Is that okay? That minus sign up on top. I got rid of that by swapping the signs on the bottom. Okay? That's it. Now, as I said, that's more leave insert standard, would you agree? Okay, that's more like what we can expect. We all okay? Right, next example. We totally okay? x equals 1 plus cos theta over sine theta, y equals 1 plus sine theta over cos theta. Find dy dx. Okay? A little bit more work to do this time, isn't there? Why? Quotient rule is just that little bit messy, isn't it? Okay, the quotient rule is a little bit, takes a little bit longer to do. So, anyway, let's go. Right, first of all, for dx dt, we need to figure out what that one is. Well, u is equal to the top line, which is 1 plus cos theta. And v is the bottom line, which is sine theta. What's du d theta? Sorry, big mistake. Not, du, not dx dt, dx d theta. Sorry, it's my mistake. So du d theta, not du dt. Right, differentiate 1 plus cos theta, what do you get? D differentiate 1, you get 0. Differentiate cos, you get minus sine. So that's minus sine theta. And then dv d theta is cos theta. Differentiate sine, and you get cos. Okay? Now, dx d theta, just be careful about your labeling, equals v du d theta minus u dv d theta 
divided by v squared. Muhammad, are you okay? Well, I'm going to do that over there when I'm finished. Are we okay with this? Do you notice the way I've changed the letter from du dx to du dt to just to fit the situation? Okay? Now, v du d theta, that's sine of theta multiplied by minus the sine of theta, minus u dv d theta, which is minus the cos of theta, multiplied by 1 plus cos theta, and then all divided by v squared, which is just sine squared theta. Is that okay? Everybody happy? Now on top, it's going to be minus sine squared theta, minus cos squared theta, minus the cos of theta, divided by sine squared theta. Sorry, Maury. So divided by sine squared theta. I'm missing David McGrath, Kate Stewart, and Sean Kim. So just those two. Sean? No, Sean was taken. Kim. Now, do you notice anything here looking at the left hand side? What's cos squared theta plus sine squared theta? One. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. So what's minus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta? Minus 1. So this is minus 1 minus the cos of theta divided by sine squared theta. Is that okay? So that's my answer for dx d theta. Is that okay? dx d theta is minus 1 minus cos theta divided by sine squared theta. Now, the minus 1 came from here. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is plus 1. So minus cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is minus 1. So the minus... Minus sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. Is that, not, is that not like a minus sine squared theta plus cos squared theta? No. It makes it this. All right, yeah. And the bit inside here is 1. Yeah. So minus sine squared minus cos squared is minus 1. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. Now, next, as you said, Mohammed, we now have to do all of this messing as well for y. We've only done half the story. So that's dx d theta sorted. Now we have to get dy d theta. So we'll just scroll back up again. Now, if we look at y, would you agree that in this case, u is equal to 1 plus sine theta? and v is equal to cos theta. Yes? du d theta is what? Differentiate 1 plus sine theta. You get cos theta. dv d theta. Differentiate cos theta. You get minus sine of theta. Is that okay? So dy d theta is equal to, I won't write down the formula again, it's just over here. Same formula, except for this time it's dy d theta. So it's v du d theta, which is cos theta by cos theta, which is cos squared theta. Okay? Minus u dv d theta. Now, minus by minus, so that's going to give me a plus sine theta into 1 plus sine theta. I know you're thinking there should be a minus sign there. But the minus sign over here cancels that minus and turns it into plus. Okay? And then divided by v squared, which is cos squared theta. Okay? Now something very similar is going to happen here with the cos squared plus sine squared bit. We get dy d theta is equal to cos squared theta plus sine squared theta plus sine theta divided by cos squared theta. Okay? I've changed the order. Okay, when you multiply at the brackets, you get sine theta by one, which gives me the sine theta over here. And then you've got sine theta by sine theta, which gives me the sine squared theta here. Okay? Now, why did I change the order? That's the most important thing. Because I wanted you to see that very obviously, cos squared plus sine squared is equal to one. 
So that means that dy d theta equals 1 plus the sine of theta divided by cos squared theta. Is that okay? So now at this stage we have dx d theta and dy d theta all sorted out. Okay? Now, how do you find out dy dx? Can you just go dx and Well, it's the other way around. You, you see, when you say, could you just, you know, don't confuse it, because if you do, you could make a mistake. So it's dy d theta divided by dx d theta. So dy d theta goes on top, so that's 1 plus sine theta divided by cos squared theta. Now, dividing by dx d theta is the same as multiplying by your upside down, isn't it? So flip dx, you flip the wrong one, you see. So flip this one, and you get sine squared theta over minus 1 minus cos theta. Okay? So that's equal to minus sine of theta into 1 plus sine theta divided by cos of theta into 1 plus cos theta. Can you see again, see this minus sign? I've taken out that common minus sign. Instead of putting it on the bottom, I put it up on top. Is that okay? Just to make the answer look a little bit tidier. We all okay with that? Oh, it should be. Sorry, it should be. Sorry, my mistake. It should be a sine squared there and a cos squared there. Now we could also go. Do you know the way sine over cos is equal to tan? We could go a line further, and we could say that that's minus tan squared theta multiplied by one plus sine theta over one plus cos theta. Is that okay? That's it. Any, anything anybody wants to ask? Nothing? Like parametric differentiation, people get kind of afraid of it, but it is very straightforward. You just get dy d theta or dy dt, get dx d theta or dx dt or dx d whatever it is, and then just dy goes on top, dx goes on the bottom, flip the bottom, multiply, and you get your answer. Okay, the answer is extremely predictable in these questions. Okay? Now, the next type of, it, of differentiation is probably the most important of all for you to get. Okay, it's the difference between an A and any other grade in maths. Um, we need to completely understand what this means. I kind of mentioned it already. Remember when we were, pro we were proving the product and quotient rules? First thing I did was I took the log of both sides and then I said, now we're going to differentiate this implicitly. But now we're actually going to do it properly. Okay, we're going to explain exactly what implicit differentiation is. Okay? Now, I'm just going to write something down. The opposite to implicit is explicit. Okay? So watch this. f of x equals 2x plus e to the power of x minus the log of x. Yep. We're not going to differentiate that function. I'm just saying to you that this function depends explicitly on x. Is that okay? Explicitly on x. It depends only on the value of x. Is that okay? So that's explicit. It depends explicitly on x and only on x. Okay? Now, on the other hand, are we all agreed, first of all, that y equals a function of x? y and f of x are the same thing. So y is a function of x. All right? So watch this. 
x squared plus y squared equals 25. Now we should immediately recognize that as being what? It's a circle. Its center is 0, 0, and its radius is 5. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we'll say find the tangent at, I'm just going to pick any point on the circle, 3 comma minus 4 is on it. That's 3 squared plus 4 squared is 9 plus 16, which is 25, so that point is obviously on it. Okay? So I want to find the tangent at that point. Now, here's the important bit. This is not an explicit function, it's an implicit function. Why? It depends on x and y. Now it's okay to depend on two different things, but the problem is that y is also a function of x. So you've got a function of x, and then you've got a function of that function. You understand me? Is that all right? If y didn't depend on x, it would still be an explicit function. But the fact is that y does depend on x as well. Okay? So this is implicit. Now listen to this. We're differentiating a function of y, but y is also a function of x. What rule do you use when you have a function of a function? The chain rule. Okay? So here's, if I differentiate this, with respect to x, Okay, with respect to x. Would you agree that x squared becomes 2x? Now, ordinarily you would say y squared would become 2y. But y is also a function of x. So according to the chain rule, I have to multiply by what you get when you differentiate y. Is that okay? In other words, I have to multiply by dy dx. It's like function number 1 is y squared and function number 2 is y itself. Okay, so you differentiate function number one, you get 2y, then you differentiate y, you get dy dx. Is that okay? So that's kind of why it's being done, all right? And then on the right-hand side, well, if I differentiate 25, I get zero. So y dy dx equals minus x, I've divided across by, sorry, minus x, I've divided across by two and I brought the x across. So what's dy dx equal to? minus x over y. Now what's the point of me doing that? Like I was asked, it looks like I'm talking off the point. I was told get the equation of the tangent at 3 comma minus 4. So am I just wasting your time here? And what will it do? No, it won't give me the equation of the tangent. It'll give me the slope of the tangent. Okay? The slope of the tangent, slope of tangent, it's all coming back to that, isn't it? That first picture that we drew when we said dy dx by definition is the slope of a tangent to a curve. So slope of tangent equals dy dx. Now here's how you write it. Evaluate it at straight line down. 3 comma minus 4. So what does that mean in English? Put in 3 for x and minus 4 for y. That's all it means. So minus x, that's minus 3, divided by y, which is minus 4. And minus 3 divided by minus 4 is plus 3 over 4, so 3 quarters. Is that okay? That's the slope of our tangent. Now all I've got to do now is go y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. There's my point, there's my slope. Okay? So we're going to call this m, and this one up here is going to be x1 comma y1. Okay? So what's that formula again? y minus y1 equals m multiplied by x minus x1, which means that y plus 4 equals 3 over 4 multiplied by x minus 3. Okay? Is that alright? Multiply across by 4, and I get 4y plus 16 equals 3x minus 9 and that gives me 3x minus 4y minus 25 equals 0. So that's writing it in standard form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So that means we'd be ready to use the perpendicular distance formula if we had to, wouldn't we? Okay, if it came up. 
there's an outside chance that they could actually ask you this in the circle chapter and you could do differentiation to do it. Okay, it doesn't matter how complicated the circle is, it'll work. Okay? So like say for example, here'd be an interesting question with a bit of a twist. Imagine we have this circle. No, no. No, no. Only when the center of the circle is zero, zero. If the center of the circle wasn't zero, zero, that would not work, Michelle. Okay? Right. Sorry. Imagine we'll say C is the circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so that's just any old circle, isn't it? Now here's my question. Find the two points where this circle crosses the x-axis. Find the two points where this circle crosses the x-axis. That's part one. And then part two, find the equation of the tangent to the circle at one of these two points. So you can pick your favorite point. All right, so part one. How do I find where a, where a circle or a curve or anything crosses the x-axis for that matter? And then y equals zero. Well, if I let y equal to 0, I'm mean, I left with x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Quadratic equation, isn't it? Well, factorize it for me. x minus 5 multiplied by x plus 1 equals 0. So my answer is x equals 5 or x equals minus 1. x equals 5 or x equals minus 1. Okay? So the two points where this curve crosses the x-axis crosses the x-axis at 5, 0 or minus 1, 0. Is that okay? There's my two points. Now, all i got to do now to get the equation of a tangent at either one of these two points is differentiate to get the slope of the tangent and then y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1 for whichever point I care to choose. Okay? So x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y minus 5 equals 0. Well, what's going to happen? 2x plus 2y dy dx minus 4 plus 6 dy dx equals 0. Is that okay? Because differentiate 5, you get 0. So again, every time you, fit, you differentiate something that has a y in it, you just put dy dx after it. Okay? That's all you got to do. Why are you doing it? Chain rule. Because y is also a function of x. So we're using functions of functions, which means chain rule. Okay? Now, tidying up, I get 2y plus 6 multiplied by dy dx is equal to 4 minus 2x. So dy dx is equal to 4 minus 2x divided by 2y plus 6. Now, that's dy dx at any point, isn't it? Now, I wasn't get asked to get the slope of a tangent at any point. I was asked at either 5, 0 or minus 1, comma 0. Take your pick. Okay? Now, I'm going to pick 5, 0. All right? So, dy dx evaluated at 5, comma 0 is equal to, I'm putting in 5 for x. What am I putting in for y? 0. 
So that's 4 minus 10, which is minus 6 divided by 6. Oh, very interesting. It's minus 6 divided by 6, which is minus 1. Well, that should immediately scream something out to you. What does it tell you? It tells you a lot about this, about this tangent. The tangent is coming down at an angle of 45 degrees to the x-axis. Remember, if the slope of a line is plus 1, it's going up at 45 degrees. If the slope turns out to be minus 1, it's coming down at 45 degrees. Okay? So y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. m is minus 1, and this is my x1 comma y1. And I got y minus 0 equals minus 1 into x minus 5, which means that y equals x, sorry, minus x plus 5, which means that x plus y minus 5 equals 0. Is that okay? That's the equation of my tangent. Okay? Now, let's just quickly in our heads put in the other one. Minus 1 comma 0, because now, now that I've seen that that turned out to be a minus 1, what do you think I'm thinking about the other one? It's probably going to be plus 1. Put in minus 1 instead of x, what's 4 minus 2 by minus 1? Isn't that? 4 plus 2, which is 6, and 6 divided by 6 is plus 1. So you could actually even bring the line chapter into this, because you could prove that those two tangents are perpendicular to each other. Because if you have a line coming down at 45 degrees and you have another line coming up at 45 degrees, they have to be at right angles. So they could make a very, very interesting question out of this. And you'll notice I pulled in a few different chapters. We've been talking about the circle, except we never used any of the circle formulas, interestingly. We've been talking about the line chapter. We've been talking about differentiation. So in other words, if somebody left out the line chapter, we've caught them out. Okay? If somebody didn't study the circle chapter, we've caught them out. Or if they left out differentiation, we've caught them out. That's what the examiner is going to try to do. Catch out people who leave topics out. Okay? So don't leave anything out. Now anyway, all I want you to finish off for homework, you know what it is already. Just get the equation of the tangent at the other point to prove that they're perpendicular to each other. Prove that the two tangents are perpendicular to each other. Now it kind of, that was a little bit fluky the way it turned out. Okay? It was very lucky. Now, much more likely question this time. x cubed plus x squared y squared plus y cubed equals 8. That's some really horrifically awkward curve. Okay, we don't need to know what a curve looks like. All I want to do is find dy dx. Okay? Now, to start off with, Differentiating x cubed is a walk in the park, isn't it? 3x squared. Differentiating y cubed is only marginally more difficult. It's 3y squared, but because it's a function of y, dy dx. And differentiating 8 is also a no-brainer. Okay? Now the question is, why have I left the space in between? Product rule. Okay? The product rule. Basically what I've got to do is here u equals x squared and v equals y squared so du dx is 2x and remember watch this I'm looking for dv dx but that's a function of y is that okay so it's going to be 2y dy dx is that okay now what's the product rule u dv dx, so I won't write it down just to save space, x squared multiplied by 2y dy dx, that's u dv dx, plus v du dx, which is that multiplied by that. So the two bits in yellow multiplied together plus the two bits in blue multiplied together. So that's going to be plus 2x squared y dy dx plus 2x y squared, and then my plus 3y y squared dy dx. So this bit here is basically from the product rule. 
Now, as per usual, anything that has a dy dx in it, we keep it on the left. So I've got 2x squared y plus 3y squared multiplied by dy dx equals minus 3x squared minus 2x y squared. Is that okay? Anything without a dy dx in it, I'm moving it over to the right-hand side immediately. All right? And then what's the final step to get dy dx? dy dx equals minus into 3x squared plus 2xy squared. I'm just taking out that common minus sign. Divided by 2x squared y plus 3y squared. So it's not that hard. Are we all okay with everything? That's good.